Hi, uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone, depending on the world where you're tuning it from. Uh, I'm excited uh, to get to talk about incremental data loading into Delta Lake. Um, and this is especially helpful when working with massive data sets in the data lake. Uh, and by the time we're done with this session, uh, you're gonna taking away some simple techniques how to achieve this in the Delta Lake. So before getting into the nitty gritty of that, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Puneet. Uh, I'm a data enthusiast from Norway, where me and my colleagues has uh, recently launched uh, a group uh, based on a Synapse and Fabric-based data engineering. Uh, and if you like what you hear today, I want you to get your hands on on data engineering with Fabric. Uh, we are hosting an event uh, which has been kickstarted by none other than Estera from Microsoft on 20th June. Uh, so feel free to check that out. QR code is on the screen. So what is the Delta Lake thing, uh, which I'm keep mentioning? Uh, if you're hoping for a scenic uh, spot vacation near the lake, I kind of hate to disappoint you. Uh, Delta Lake is a super flexible storage layer, uh, which brings you an asset-based transactions, uh, scalable metadata and handling, um, and the ability to unify both uh, streaming and batch-based data processing. So it's also a heavy lifter when you're building your lake houses in uh, Synapse or Databricks, uh, and also seems to a backbone of one lake storage layer in the fabric. So think of it as a bucket based files with uh, some extra logs, which you can also store versions uh, in order to capture the changes. Uh, and hence it's gonna improve the security and performance and the reliability. So why do we need to perform an incremental loads? Uh, imagine you're a master chef and every day you have to cook like five course meal from the scratch. Uh, which kind of an exhausting task. Uh, so now, instead of doing that, you can save some of the prep work from the previous day and only cook what's new or what's the new order you're going to get, which is uh, kind of give you an a sense of an incremental loading in a nutshell. So it's all about uh, efficiency. It's all about reducing data transfer, saving some uh, computational resources, uh, kind of make it like a sous chef in your data kitchen. So picture this, if you have one source table uh, that you wanted to uh, load into two target table, uh, and one way you can do is full load, uh, like a dump truck pouring the data from the bronze layer to the silver zone, uh, where you can you know, either materialize the data in between or from the data frame, you can clean, uh, merge the data based on your merging strategy, new comes as insert, maybe old goes as is, or update depends on your flow. Uh, in a one way you're doing the full load on the other hand the target uh, gets the new incremental data uh, in a small chunks uh, like a gardener planting small seeds uh, this can be a use case where you represent okay uh, one process loading all the data every time versus another one using only small chunks at a time uh, if you flip a scenario a bit, you have two bronze tables uh, uh, merging into one large uh, gold table, maybe aggregated basis. Uh, so instead of flooding the target table into full loads from both the sources, what you can do is, is send only the small incremental changes. So notice that in both the cases, I'm keeping the bronze layer as a pen mode, which is one of the common way of loading uh, data into the bronze layer. So how do we do this? There are several approaches. Uh, the first one is comparison-based approach where we compare uh, old data versus the new data or even old logs or versions. Uh, but it can be like finding a needle in a haystack. Efficient when you're dealing with small uh, changes, but not so much when you're dealing with large ones. Uh, the another one we have is watermark-based approach uh, where we track only what has been updated last time. Uh, it's like marking your place in a book uh, can be straightforward, but could be tricky if the updates are not timely ordered. Uh, it also generates a need for managing uh, metadata, uh, the tables and their consistency. The third one we have is a change feed, which we only track the changes before you merge them or come as is uh, or when they happen. Uh, imagine this as a small news sticker you uh, see in your TV screen. Uh, instead of showing full news, it's only show you the short version of it. Uh, but with the change field, you also need a system to track the changes. The fourth one, which is checkpoint based approach uh, using stru structured streaming. Uh, instead of streaming everything, we only trigger it once uh, and also remembers uh, or where it stopped last time. 
like a bookmark or uh, if you can imagine a Netflix binge watching, uh, you can continue where you left off from the previous episode of whatever you're into, maybe uh, Stranger Things. Um, it's efficient instead of focusing on uh, metadata management, you can focus on value creation for the business. Uh, it supports by Spark natively. Uh, we'll see in the demo as well. Uh, it may need some housekeeping over the time, exactly like you have in your other streaming processes. Uh, yeah. So before we move on, uh, let me show you a demo, how this works in Microsoft Fabric. Same you can apply in Synapse. Uh, we can take a look at this architecture and a short demo, like a mini field trip. Uh, we cover only the red part of the process, showing you both comparison and checkpoint incremental load. Uh, we're going to load the data from Azure Open Dataset. So yeah, let's see. So let's talk about the process of incremental data loading into Delta Lake uh, from the Azure Open Dataset. Uh, our data of choice is New York City Green Taxi Dataset and we are loading certain necessary libraries from Azure Open Dataset uh, and uh, we are enabling certain uh, performance settings uh, that helps us speed up reading the bucket files in the one lake. Uh, the main part of our process involves setting up the parameters for the load type and the date range. So if the delta load parameter is set to 1, that means incremental loading and we have certain start date and end date to work with. Uh, now the next part is where the magic happens. If the delta uh, table already exists, we fetch the maximum date and set it as a start date and start loading data incrementally. If it doesn't exist, it's going to take the parameter of start date from the parameter field and uh, set the end date as the next month. If the delta load is zero, which means full load, we load the data month by month from start to end. And this flexibility allow us to backfill the data whenever necessary. So we're starting from June, ending in July. Uh, this is because the May data has already been loaded. Uh, the next we're defining the schema for NYC green taxi data to ensure the accurate data type. Uh, then uh, comes the loading phase. So in this phase, we're loading the data chunk by chunk or in our case, month by month. Uh, we fetch the data for the given month, load into data frame, uh, add some uh, new columns into it and write it back to the delta table in append mode and the process is repeated until all the data is loaded. So once uh, the data is loaded incrementally into Delta Lake, we're going to check the maximum date, what has been loaded so far for the sanity purposes. Uh, finally, uh, we're going to vacuum uh, the table uh, to maintain our data retention. And we're going to use the optimize command to manage our file size. Let's ensure the data remains manageable. Uh, so it, as it grows over the time. So yeah, this is the whole process uh, for incremental loading using comparison method. Uh, and we're comparing what has been loaded before and loading the next iteration accordingly month by month into the bronze layer in a print fashion. And let's uh, jump now to the next notebook, uh, taking this appended data from the bronze layer into the silver layer. So now we're loading the data from a previously prepared bronze layer to the silver layer using the structured streaming, uh, but there is a twist. Uh, we'll be triggering it only once effectively, uh, simulating the stream as a batch based operation. Yeah, so let's get started. First, we load the necessary libraries. Uh, with these in place, uh, we're going to generate a date dimension using a custom function. This function takes the start date and the end date and churns out the data frame filled with the dates. Uh, we then uh, load this date dimension into the silver layer. Uh, this operation overrides any existing data in the table. Then we define certain paths, which is base path, and then create a checkpoint directory path for the checkpoint file. Uh, and this file is a key file as it stores the metadata for our streaming operations. Uh, it holds the information natively handled by Spark. So like tracking already processed source files, ident identifying new ones, which is very crucial for loading incremental data from the bronze layer. We have now have added an extra feature, which is to reload the data from the bronze layer based on delta load flag. If this flag is set to zero, it checks and removes the checkpoint directory. What does this mean? This means that if we need to do full data reload, we can change this parameter. It will kickstart the checkpointing and initializing the stream. 
we then define a function here uh, to write the data frame to the nyc green taxi underscore temp which is our uh, intermediate layer into delta format uh, in an override mode so every time a new increments come instead of upserting them into the silver layer we store them as an intermediate layer hence capturing the changes if the notebook fails at this step it can still pick up where it left off maintaining the consistent state so as we choose uh, to simulate a streaming job as a bash based operation we are doing this by setting up this parameter which is triggered once parameter equals to true so instead of processing uh, this in intervals we are saying that just do it one time uh, this saves us a cluster to keep it running all the time uh, so we'll triggering it only once once our data is loaded uh, we can start analyzing it by this minimum and maximum query so i have this previous loaded data frame which is from 1st may to 1st of june so if i run this again it's gonna bring us or show us at least the new increment which i have already appended in our previous demo so let's see what the result looks like yeah so it's from 1st may to 1 uh, 1st of june uh, and now it's from 1st of june the first of July, which is a new incremental chunk. So now we have analyzed the incremental chunk is doing okay. We can also do certain cleanup operation to disable uh, retention during checks and remove the old data in the table. We can finally enrich the data uh, with the holiday tables. And this is a shortcut table referencing the ex existing data from my existing ADLS. And you can see it's represented as a link sign here. We enrich the data. We can represent that as a chart to analyze the taxi data, uh, maybe uh, of regular days versus holidays, which can be useful for decision making processes. We can also bring certain extra libraries if we need to, uh, like grade expectation to validate our data quality control. So finally, with our enriched view, uh, which contains the small chunk of data rather than the large full set, uh, we can add an extra column like job name to enrich it further for the metadata and merge this small chunk data frame to the silver layer uh, on our lake house. So finally, there you go. We have successfully loaded the data from the bronze layer to the silver layer using the structured streaming. Uh, but simulating as a batch operation and perform some initial data analysis before the merging. So yeah, that was a short demo. Um, and uh, if you're a Databricks user, you can use a Databricks auto loader for incremental ingestion or checkpoint technique that we saw today from bronze to silver layer. Or if you have a use case, you can use proprietary DLT method, hence handling everything from ingestion to incremental updates like a charm. So yeah, there are certain things you need to consider. Few of them are data skew, ensure your data is evenly distributed for efficient processes. Uh, merge strategy, choose it wisely based on your data size and the change rate. Latency, if you have fast update, choose your approach that supports uh, or suits best for your processes. Parallel processing is make sure you use it to speed up your load by parallel processing. Uh, resource utilization, be mindful for your resources. You don't want to exhaust them. So yeah, uh, with that, uh, we've come to an end uh, for our today's session. And as of June 24th, this covers a strategy which I know and love, uh, but this field is always on the move. That means it's always innovating. So don't be surprised if you come across some new strategies or more approaches to tackle incremental data load in the future. I hope you find this insightful and remember the key is to always choose the right approach based on the environmental factors you're in. And don't forget to join us on 28th for hands-on data engineering event and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn for any question you might have. Thank you for your time.